Street Fighter 6 is out and it's a banger. Without a doubt, Capcom has got another hit on its hands. Capcom is going for a more mainstream appeal with a streamlined combat system, new game modes, and an optional modern control schema. This makes total sense from a marketing standpoint, as Street Fighter is one of many gaming franchises that has mainstream appeal. There are people who don't play video games that know about Street Fighter and some of them can even name you some of the characters from the game. You even see figures in the mainstream cosplaying characters from the game such as AEW's Young Bucks, WWE's Zelina Vega, and even actress Jamie Lee Curtis. You can also see the game being referenced and parodied on TV shows and cartoons such as Robot Chicken and Family Guy. A large part of this mainstream appeal began back in 1991 with the release of Street Fighter 2. Not only was this an excellent arcade game for its time, its success would see the rising popularity of the 101 fighting game genre. Obviously Street Fighter 2 wasn't the first 101 fighting game as evidenced by the 2 in its title. However, it introduced a number of features and innovations that other fighting games would adapt. One of the more infamous features that the game introduced was the release of multiple versions of the game. Capcom released no less than five versions of Street Fighter 2 between 1991 and 1994. Now, in all fairness, keep in mind that this was before the days of online updates, downloadable content, and season passes. Throughout the years following, they'll release even more versions, each either designed for a specific console or to commemorate an anniversary. The good thing about these updates was that there were so many gameplay tweaks and new features added that they almost felt like entirely new games. Other fighting games will utilize a similar pattern, most notably the Fatal Fury 2 update, Fatal Fury Special, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 which was of course an update of Mortal Kombat 3. The purpose of this video is to go over these different versions and discuss the differences between them. This isn't going to be a deep dive as this is aimed primarily at newcomers and casual viewers. Still, if you're a longtime watcher or if you're a longtime fan of Street Fighter, feel free to hang out a bit. You might learn some stuff and even if you don't, it's still going to be a fun trip down memory lane. While I will touch on Rainbow Edition a bit, I'm not going to go over the bootlegs and I'll only briefly touch upon some of the console ports. Capcom has released so many compilations and anniversary collections featuring these games that if you want to play them, it's not hard to find them. Of course, there are a few exceptions here and there that will require some searching on eBay, but even then, it still isn't hard to find them if you want to play them. And on a side note, I know there's a whack-a-mole version of Street Fighter 2, and there's also a pinball machine, but I'm not going to be going over either of those because I'm only interested in the fighting games. So before I get started, if you're not already subscribed, then please hit that big red button and click the bell icon. It's a small click for you, but it helps me out immensely. I like to go over indie titles, retro games, game related tech, and of course, I like to do documentaries such as this. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, hop on in. And without further ado, let's get started. This is the one that started it all, and this will likely be the one I spend the most time on. Street Fighter 2 came out in 1991 in the arcades, and will come to the Super Nintendo the following year. For many people, myself included, the SNES version will be their first exposure to not only the game, but the series itself. A lot of people weren't familiar with or even played the original Street Fighter, which to be honest wasn't that good. The only port of that game at the time was on a TurboGrafx CD, where it was known under the name Fighting Street. Street Fighter 2 would make a number of improvements on the formula, including a greater focus on its two-player competitive mode, 
better controls, and better graphical and character designs. Ken and Ryu were back, and like in Street Fighter, they had the same moveset. This was because if you played Street Fighter in 2 player mode, Player 2 took the role of Ken. They were joined by six other fighters. The sumo wrestler E. Honda, the man beast Blanca, the U.S. soldier Guile, whose steam went with everything and to this day has one of the best haircuts in gaming, Dalsum, a yoga master whose limbs could stretch, the pro wrestler Zangief, and last but definitely not least, Chun-Li, the first lady of the franchise. Each of these characters had their own strengths, weaknesses, and abilities, and players could find at least one that would perfectly complement their playstyle. For instance, Guile's moves involved charging, making him perfect for players who rely heavily on defense. Since you blocked by holding the backward direction, that automatically allowed players to ready his moves while warding off their opponent. Dawson was slow, but his long reach could make up for it. Zangief was also pretty slow, and he had no projectiles, but he was incredibly strong, and his moves would do a lot of damage to you if they connected. Once you made it through the regular cast, you would face off against four bosses. The Boxer Balrog, the Acrobat Vega, Sagat, the final boss from the original Street Fighter, and finally, the iconic M. Bison, the game's big villain, and the leader of the Shadowloo terrorist organization. Oddly enough, three of these bosses had their names shifted around when the game was released in the United States. The character known as Vega was known as Balrog in the Japanese game, M. Bison was known as Vega, while Balrog was known as M. Bison for reasons that become obvious if you take a second to look at him. These were all controlled by the CPU unfortunately, and players really wanted to be able to play as these guys. So this brings us to our next entry. Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, released in 1992, was the first revision to Street Fighter 2. Not only did this game make the bosses playable, but it also gave two players the ability to play as the same character. The SNES version of the original Street Fighter also had this feature, but it was only accessible by using a code when the Capcom logo showed up on the screen. When players picked the same character, they would have different sprite color palettes in order to tell the two apart. From then forward, Street Fighter, along with other fighting games, would expand on this with additional color palettes and even additional costumes. The bosses were toned down in terms of balancing, so just because you picked them didn't guarantee you an automatic win. Still, their moves look pretty cool to watch. Balrog has some devastating punches, while Vega's flying moves were pretty cool to look at in action. They are even better when you're on his stage, because that way you can see him jump and climb on his fence when you pulled off his moves. Sagat's moves were like a more extreme version of Ken and Ryu's moves, with his uppercut arcing and his fireball having both standing and kneeling versions. And of course, there was M. Bison himself, who could fly across the screen with his flaming Psycho Crusher. The main cast would also receive some minor tweaks to their movesets, and the graphical effects would be tweaked. There wasn't a big huge difference between Street Fighter 2 and the Championship Edition, but the stages did have new color palettes. This version of Street Fighter would come to the Sega Genesis as Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. Not only did it include the content for the arcade version, but it also included an option that allowed players to play with increased speed along with roll sets and move lists from Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which was the next update. So it's kind of like you were getting two different versions of Street Fighter 2 in one cartridge. After the release of Championship Edition, numerous bootleg versions of Street Fighter 2 would pop up. Chief among them being Street Fighter 2 Rainbow Edition, named such because the logo was colored in a rainbow palette. These hacks completely broke the game with features such as projectiles that homed in on opponents, teleports, faster speed, and mid-air special moves. These hacks, especially Rainbow Edition, would gain popularity among the fan base 
even though they did remove most of the skill and completely ruined the balancing. It was said that Capcom would develop Street Fighter 2 Turbo in response to the popularity of these hacks. It's unknown how true this is, but several of the features that were introduced into hacks will make their way into other Capcom fighting games, including other Street Fighter games. Street Fighter 2 Turbo, or Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, was pretty much Championship Edition, but there were a number of tweaks. For one, the game was much faster. Also, characters were once again rebalanced, with several characters even getting a new special move, such as Chun Li's Fireball and Dalsum's Teleport. The graphics were also retouched, with the characters gaining new palette swaps and the backgrounds also being recolored. While Championship Edition skipped Super Nintendo, Street Fighter 2 Turbo would hit the console in 1993, so now Super Nintendo players could play as the bosses as well while having to use a Game Genie hack. The Super Nintendo port allowed players to adjust the speed, and they also gave players to play what's called the Normal Mode, which was basically Championship Edition. So like the Sega Genesis game, players were basically getting two versions of Street Fighter 2 in one cartridge. Street Fighter 2 Turbo would widely be regarded as one of the best versions of Street Fighter 2, if not the best. It will receive a few ports beyond the Super Nintendo one, including a 2006 Xbox 360 arcade port that contained online play. Also, Street Fighter 2 Turbo will be the last Street Fighter game to utilize the CPS-1 arcade board. This arcade board powered many Capcom classic arcade titles, such as Strider, Final Fight, and the King of Dragons. Still, Capcom felt that it was time for an upgrade. And with that upgrade would come another version of Street Fighter 2. Super Street Fighter 2 would be the first game to utilize the CPS2 arcade board, slightly enhancing the game's visuals and sound. The CPS2 board will later go on to power games such as X-Men, Darkstalkers, and Aliens vs. Predator. This was a revision to Street Fighter, so obviously there wasn't much of a difference graphics-wise, especially compared to other CPS2 games. Still, if you pay attention, you'll notice that the animations, backgrounds, and sprites looked a little bit more colorful and vibrant. Also, the music was different as well. As the title indicates, this game's big selling point was the addition of four new challengers. You have Fei Long, one of many Bruce Lee-inspired characters to enter fighting games, who fought with Jeet Kune Do and even brandished a pair of nunchucks in one of his wind poses. You also have Thunderhawk, a Native American man who resided in Mexico, DJ, a Jamaican kickboxer who's also a reggae artist, because stereotypes, and finally, Cammy, the franchise's second playable female character. All four of these characters have unique movesets of their own and will make their mark on the overall Street Fighter history, with both Cammy and DJ returning in the most recent installment. The 12 main characters would also see their movesets updated, with several characters gaining new moves. The game will really start to differentiate between Ken and Ryu's movesets. Although in previous games, their movesets were slightly adjusted and their balancing was tweaked to make some difference between them, Super Street Fighter 2 would see both characters gain a unique special move. If he performed Ken's uppercut with a high punch, he could set his opponent on fire, while performing a half circle forward motion with Ryu would have him shoot a version of his Adoken which was red and would set his opponent ablaze if it connected. This was based on a glitch in Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which turned his Hadouken red at times. But in this game, this was made into its own move, and it would even make it into the franchise's overall lore. The arcade game also featured a tournament battle mode. When four Super Street Fighter 2 cabinets were linked together, players can play an eight-person single elimination tournament in which players will move to another cabinet seat when they won or lost the match. The game will be released for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis in the summer of 1994, and will be the last Street Fighter 2 game on a 16-bit platform. The home console ports contain a number of multiplayer modes, including a tournament mode of its own, although thankfully, this version didn't require four consoles to be linked together. Speaking of linking, however, 
The home console ports of Super Street Fighter 2 were among the handful of games that were compatible with the X-Band, which was a short-lived modem that would allow Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis players to play each other online over dial-up internet. While Super Street Fighter 2 would be the last 16-bit console version of Street Fighter 2, it would be far from the last revision of the game. Capcom had one more version to close out the era, at least for the time being. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo would be the last version of Street Fighter 2 that would be released in the arcades for several years, and it would see some major overhauls. The heads-up display graphics will once again be redone, and like every other version of Street Fighter 2, characters would have their movesets adjusted. The game also added a few new mechanics, such as the air combo and the super combo. The former is pretty much what it says, while the latter would allow players to unleash a high-powered version of one of their attacks by filling up a meter at the bottom of the screen. This attack could do a huge amount of damage to their opponent, similar to the desperation moves in SNK games. This would also be the first arcade version of Street Fighter 2 with an adjustable speed setting. Previously, you could only adjust the speed in various console ports. An arcade operator could either lock in the speed setting themselves, or if the corresponding dip switch was set to free select, players could pick one of three speed options. Unfortunately, the three bonus minigames were removed. Another new character would be added to the cast, the mysterious Akuma. He was an evil and demonic looking being who would have overpowered versions of Ken and Ryu's movesets. If you satisfied certain conditions in the game's single player mode, he would appear as a secret final boss, killing him Bison. And if you enter the code on the character select screen, you can even play as him. While the game skips 16-bit consoles, it would hit the 3DO along with Amiga and MS-DOS. It would also come to PlayStation and Sega Saturn as part of the Street Fighter Collection, a two-disc compilation released in 1997. This collection contained both Super Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter Alpha 2 Gold along with Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And of course, throughout the next several years, there would be other versions of Super Street Fighter 2 released with several different revisions and changes to them. In fact, these next several entries are based on Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Super Street Fighter 2 X for matching service was released in 2000 only on the Japanese Dreamcast and it could only be obtained by mail order. As its name indicates, it was online compatible with Sega's matching service, although the servers would be shut down in 2003. The game contained a number of unique features. You can unlock a set of dip switches, which could adjust various features in the game. Using these dip switches, players can unlock two additional versions of Akuma. There was Shin Akuma, who was based on the CPU-controlled version of the character, and Tengoki, a version of Akuma that can use his Raging Demon attack as a super combo. Another option allowed players to once again access the bonus minigames that were removed from the original arcade version. I only learned about this version of the game while researching this video, and I couldn't find a whole lot more information about the game, and that's why there is no gameplay footage. Nonetheless, it's got enough new features to distinguish itself from other versions of Street Fighter 2, so that's why I gave it its own entry. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival was basically a version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo which was custom made for the Game Boy Advance hardware. Character art, menu art, and the heads up displays were all redrawn and many of the characters would receive new backgrounds. Some of these backgrounds were taken from the Street Fighter Alpha games. The audio and sound effects were also adjusted to fit the GBA sound capabilities. Because the Game Boy Advance only had four buttons compared to the six that the game normally uses, the movesets had to be slightly adjusted. There were also options for easy inputs and customized mapping. Some mapping options would use long presses or multiple button combinations. While it wouldn't be an exact match for the arcade or even console versions, it was easy to map the buttons in a way that will work for you. Also, the bonus games were bought back after being removed from the arcade version. 
Now, while this game was obviously no substitute for the arcade, or pretty much any other version of Street Fighter 2 Turbo, it does a good job of making it fit the Game Boy Advance. Although, personally, I would have liked to see a more original Street Fighter game, but that might have been too much for Capcom. This version will be released for the Wii U Virtual Console. And here's hoping Nintendo considers adding this version to the Switch Online's Game Boy Advance section. If you're a Game Boy Advance owner, or you like Street Fighter, you should probably check this out at least once. Again, while it's not the best version, it is pretty unique. And it does a good job of making the game work on the Game Boy Advance. Hyper Street Fighter 2 Turbo The Anniversary Edition, which I'll just call Hyper Street Fighter 2, is a special version of Super Street Fighter 2 released to commemorate the franchise's 15th anniversary. Originally released on PlayStation 2, the game would later have a limited arcade release along with an Xbox port. The home ports would also be bundled with a version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. In addition to that, they would contain options for three different soundtracks. There is an arranged soundtrack, the CPS2 soundtrack from Super and Super Turbo, and the CPS1 soundtrack from the first three editions, although the CPS1 soundtrack would have all new remixes for the new characters. The arcade release would be the sixth official iteration of Street Fighter 2 and will be Capcom's last game to utilize the CPS2 arcade board. What was cool about this game is that you could play as any version of a character from all the Street Fighter 2 games that they were playable in. On the character select screen, you pick from one of five modes. Normal, Champ, Turbo, Super, and Super Turbo, each signifying a revision of Street Fighter 2. This selection determined what characters you could choose from along with their moveset. For instance, if you picked Normal, you were only limited to the eight World Warriors with no super combos or any other extras. Picking Turbo and Champion would exclude the four new challengers. Of course, this time you could select from the bosses. Picking Super Turbo would give you the entire cast, including Akuma, who is once again a hidden character. So basically, even though there are only 17 characters in the game, you had up to 65 different variants. The game will be re-released as part of both the Capcom Arcade Stadium 2 and the Capcom Fighting Collection, both of which are available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Steam. However, these are based on the arcade port, so you don't have the option for different soundtracks, but the Capcom Fighting Collection port has online play, which makes up for it. This is a fun game and a great way to experience Street Fighter 2 history, so you should definitely check it out if you're a fan. By the way, Capcom Classics Collection Volume 1 released in 2005, contained the first three Street Fighter 2 games, and they have a similar mode called Street Fighter 2 Deluxe Battle. This allowed players to play as any version of the characters from the first three games, which is Vanilla Street Fighter 2, Championship Edition, and Hyper Fighting. However, this is just a special versus mode instead of a full featured game of its own, so that's why I'm including it in this section. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix is a version of Super Street Fighter 2 that was released in 2008. On the surface, it felt like the game was released to tide players over until the release of Street Fighter 4 later that year. However, you have to look at the way the game was put together to see the game's true beauty. As its name implies, the game is a high definition version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. However, rather than simply upscale the graphics, the sprites in the backgrounds will be redrawn from scratch. The people behind this revamp were none other than Yudon Studios, the people behind the Street Fighter comics. The music was remixed by the folks at Overclocked Remix, who were handpicked by Capcom after associate producer Ray Jimenez heard their 2006 tribute album, Blood on the Asphalt. The game also features balancing options by former fighting game player turned game developer David Serling and his Backbone Entertainment. So in effect, this was a game for fans of Street Fighter by fans of Street Fighter. The game also featured numerous options for tweaks to the gameplay. 
players also have the option to play with the original sprites instead of the new HD ones. The game is available on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. While the Xbox 360 version unfortunately isn't backwardly compatible with the Xbox One, you can stream the PS3 version as part of the PlayStation Plus service. If you're a fan of Street Fighter 2, then you should check it out at least once. It demonstrates why Capcom is one of the best when it comes to remaking their games. Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers, is the 10th, as far as I know, and most recent version of Street Fighter 2 to be released. This is a Nintendo Switch exclusive entry in the series that was released in 2017. The game features HD graphics, online multiplayer, a new soundtrack remix, additional game modes, and two additional characters, Evil Ryu and Violent Ken. With Evil Ryu having been introduced in Street Fighter Alpha 2, and Violent Ken having been introduced in SNK vs. Capcom Chaos. The HD sprites were the Udon sprites from the HD Turbo Remix, and players have the option of switching between them and the classic graphics. The game also features the Buddy Battle Mode, in which two players can team up to fight one CPU controlled opponent. This mode was first introduced way back in Street Fighter Alpha under the name Dramatic Battle. The game also features the Way of Hado mode, a first-person minigame with 3D graphics in which players play as Ryu and use Joy-Con motions to defeat as many enemies as possible, mimicking his special moves. This game received mixed reviews, with many feeling that the game was a bit overpriced at $40 and the Joy-Con controls weren't suited for fighting games. Personally, I feel if they were going to add additional characters to the game, they should have at least picked two characters who weren't Shotokan clones. Still, the game itself isn't bad, and if you like Street Fighter and you had a Switch, then this is pretty much the most complete version. Just make sure you get yourself a good fighting game controller. Although Capcom Fighting Collection, Capcom Arcade Stadium, and the Street Fighter Collection are all available on the console if you want to play a more authentic version of Street Fighter 2. With the rise of popularity of Street Fighter 2, many game developers would create fighting games of their own in an attempt to capitalize off its success. This early to mid 90s boom period would see the emergence of dozens of new fighting games. While there were several good ones, very few of them managed to stand out amongst the crowd. However, there was one franchise that managed to stand the test of time to make an impact of its own and in some ways it managed to surpass Street Fighter. It's managed to last even to this day and has become iconic in its own right. This game is none other than the King of Fighters. If you want to learn more about it, I'm working on a retrospective series of the franchise and as of right now, it's currently up to its fourth installment. You can check out the whole series so far by clicking the playlist that just popped up on your screen. And with that, I'm Audi 51000G.